Hi guys, welcome back. This is AP Biology uh, Review, Evolution Part 3, and this is cladistics. Alright, so this is a really cool slide from Bozeman Biology. Um, it goes over the major terms we're going to be talking about today. So, let's start with phylogenetics. Phylogenetics is the evolutionary history of a species or group of species. Phylogenetic trees show the evolutionary history of a group of organisms represented by a branching diagram. Each branch point represents the divergence of two evolutionary lineages from a common ancestor. And so think of a tree. Okay, this would be one branch. This would be another branch. Here's where the branches come together. And that's where their common ancestor is. So we can use structural evidence to help us sort out and create a phylogenetic tree. So the structural evidence we're going to use in this case is the structure of a heart in animals. So this is a cute fish, clownfish here. It has two chambers in its heart, the chamber one, chamber two. Now that structure evolved right around here. So that means that everything to the left of this X does not have a two chambered heart. Everything to right of this X does have a two chambered heart. Now, just to go over this picture a little bit, the blue is what we call deoxygenated blood. It does not have oxygen in it. The red color is oxygenated blood. So in this case, you can see that the heart pumps the deoxygenated blood to the gills where it becomes oxygenated or gains oxygen. And then it goes to the body to be used, returns to the heart to be pumped. Reptiles, on the other hand, have a three-chambered heart. One, two, three. And that evolved later because as we go up the tree, we go closer to current time, which is at the top of the tree. This X is where the three-chambered heart evolved, meaning everything to the left of this X does not have a three-chambered heart. Everything to the right of this X does. Now, all animals, this would be an example of an animal, a cute monkey, has have a four-chambered heart. You can see here, there is one chamber, two chambers, three chambers, four chambers. And that evolved later in time, denoted by this X, meaning everything to the left of this X does not have a four-chambered heart. And all the organisms to the right of this X have at least a four-chambered heart. Now, one thing I did not mention um, is the structure of exactly how this works, and I'll be doing that in another presentation. Now, we could use a different type of evidence to develop a phylogenetic tree. And one type of evidence we can use is molecular evidence or DNA evidence. Now, you're likely going to see a free response question or a couple of um, multiple choice questions on Monday's test about molecular evidence and how you can make a phylogenetic tree using it. Now, the idea is pretty simple. It's called parsimony. Now, that means that um, we try to get to the simplest explanation or the simplest relationships possible. And so what we do is we say, okay, which two organisms have the fewest differences in their DNA? Now, in this case, it would be tunicata and vertebrata because they're close. Now, there are other organisms, for example, these two, which are very close on the tree, meaning they have very few differences between them in their DNA. But let's take the mollusca and the vertebrata. They are far apart on the tree. One is on one side of the tree. One is on the other side of the tree. And so they have more differences between their DNA sequences. So if you look at this whole tree, this is a phylogenetic tree. Now, if we look at part of the tree, we call that a clade. Clades are used for organizing organisms based on evolutionary relationships. In other words, who is related to who and where to become from. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to go over an FRQ. All right. So this is a 2011 free response question. Okay. 
So let's go down to, where we go, number four. All right, so let's read this question. Phylogeny, phylogeny re reflects the evolutionary history of organisms. Discuss two mechanisms of speciation that lead to the development of separate species from a common ancestor. Explain three methods that have been used to investigate the phylogeny of an organism. Describe a strength and a weakness of each method. C, the two phylogenetic trees represent the relationship of whales to six other mammals. All of the organisms shown have a pulley-shaped astral astragalus bone in the ankle except for the whale. For each tree, describe a monophyletic group or clade, the closest relative to the whale, and the point at which the pulley astragalus was lost or gained. Based on the principle of parsimony, the simplest explanation is the best, and the genomic information in the table below, identify which tree is the best representation of the evolutionary relationship of these animals. Justify your answer. And so we have a phylogenetic tree here. Okay, whale starts on the left, cow on the right, hippo in the middle. And that is what we call tree one. And today what I'm going to show you how to do, or how to kind of work on part C. Now in tree two, instead of the whale, we have the camel on the left, the cow on the right. So there's no changes here. Deer and cow are still on the right. But the whale is now next to the hippo very different from tree one. Now, the question in part C is asking us, which tree is correct? So let's look at the molecular evidence. Okay, let's see if I can draw on this. Molecular evidence is here. Now this is cow's molecular evidence, deer's molecular evidence, whale's molecular evidence, hippo, pig, peccary, camel, etc. Now, what I want to show you is the difference between the whale and the hippo and the difference between the whale and the pig. And the reason I want to show you that is, excuse me, the hippo and the pig. In this tree, the hippo and the pig are closely related because they're close together. In this tree, the hippo and the whale are closely related because they're close together. So let's look at the whale and the hippo. The whale and the hippo have the following sequences identical. So let's count them up. We're looking for a plus, a minus, or a question mark. So for example, if both of these have a plus, they have the same sequence at this position. So the whale and the hippo have one, identical sequence, two, three, four, five, six. So let's go back up here. So this would align with this tree, meaning the whale and the hippo have six similar DNA sequences. And so they would be closely related. Now let's look to see if the hippo and the pig are closer than that, and that would mean that tree one is correct. So let's look at the hippo and the pig. So the hippo is here, the pig is here. Okay, we're going to look across the same way to see if there's similarities. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I haven't seen any similarities yet. Here's one similarity. So the hippo and the pig have one DNA sequence that is similar. Now that means that they have fewer DNA sequences that are similar. So therefore, this cladogram is not correct. This cladogram is correct because it denotes the hippo and the whale as similar organisms. And that is represented or justified using the evidence in this, in these two lines. Okay. Now, Lastly, it wanted you to estimate where the bone either was gained or lost, the polyastragala. Astragal astragalus. Sorry, I can't say this. I can't speak this morning. Sorry, guys. So if you think about the only organism, and if this is the correct phylogenetic tree, the only organism that does not have the pulley is the whale. So we would put that derived character right about here because every other organism has the pulley. The whale does not, so we would put that derived character right there. 
Okay. So thank you guys for your time and good luck studying.